everyone dies. And when it's our time to go, some of us will be embalmed, buried, some cremated. But there's a place where our bodies still tell stories long after death. And it's in our own backyard. This week, we take you to the body farm. We continue our series on the Forensic Anthropology Center, The Body Farm. And tonight, Leslie Ackerson gives us a rare day in the life look inside the gates. The facility is not anything like what you imagine it is. Yes, we have a lot of dead bodies out there. You know, you have these two fences. You have the privacy fence and then the chain link with the razor wire on top to keep people out. So when you first walk in, you're on a nice gravel pathway, and then your focus shifts. As soon as you start looking a little to the left and to the right, and the gravel pathway continues, you start seeing black plastic on the ground, and you realize underneath that black plastic is where we have placed the donors. The Forensic Anthropology Center in Knoxville, Tennessee, has been the final resting place for thousands over the last 40 years. It is, I think, this interesting sort of juxtaposition where you feel like you're going for a walk in the woods. There's these trails and there's trees and it's a really nice scenery, but there are various burials or surface remains around you. People have these pictures of, you know, it being horribly smelly and just being awful and it's not. You're just out in the woods. You can be standing right next to one that's decomposing and not smell it. Or you can be standing 10 feet away and really smell it. We have typically between about 150 and 200 donors who are out of the facility at any one particular time. Some bodies are exposed to Mother Nature. Weather, temperature, and insects all play an important role in the progression of decay. When we are out there doing research, doing science, uh, to learn more about the human condition. Decomposition is, is all part of the process of life and death. You can just see all the hundreds of people who made that altruistic gift to give their bodies to the advancement of science and forensic science. People think it's a spooky place, but I actually think it's a place that's just full of hope and it's very peaceful. A peaceful place that is also quite busy. Not a day goes by that someone isn't at the body farm. It's not a place you can go visit unless you're one of the many coroners, detectives, and investigators who travel from all over the world to gain valuable skills in crime scene investigation. Whether it's estimating time of death, learning to identify skeletal remains, or excavating mass graves. I'm really proud of our training program. We have students who are law enforcement and have lots of experience under their belts and other students who, who have never seen you know, a deceased individual before. We are able to modify our courses to really match their experience and comfort level. <laughs> On this day, it's a group of experts from south of the border. We have crime scene investigators, anthropologists, archaeologists, individuals who work in the kidnapping units in Mexico, and they're working on a burial. They need to find it, excavate it, document it. So my team right now is working on troweling away at the dirt and screening it, hopefully encounter some human remains. What they learn on their visit will be crucial to helping solve crimes in Mexico. We can say their mission is to find more than 82,000 cases of missing persons in Mexico. I think the biggest thing that, that the facility has done for, for investigators is exposing investigators to that environment and helping us to see it in real time allows us to deal with the challenges that we face every day. And yes, there's rotting flesh, dead bodies and bones, but the forensic anthropologists who work here on a daily basis want people to understand this isn't a scary movie set. The body farm is not a place of sensationalism and we don't place our donors out for you know grotesque displays. Uh, we have the utmost respect for our donors. While what happens behind these gates is kept private, the team hopes the power of their research will impact those beyond the gates for years to come. So that they can see that the facility is not just this big black scary box, but something that they can feel a part of. They can understand how this research helps people. That brings a sense of community and pride to what we do. In Knoxville, I'm Leslie Ackerson. 
And as those scientists explain, work at the body farm may sound like a crime TV show. Tomorrow, we'll explain the difference between pop culture and the true nature of what those scientists do. And you can watch part one of our series and read more about the body farm right now online at WBIR.com.